Hello everyone, today's video is about uh, someone reacting to um, MSM or high dose sulfur therapy um, and then also thoughts about uh, how to approach a case that is very very sensitive um, potentially within the context of using low dose immunotherapy but maybe just just general thoughts about folks who are um, super super sensitive to things. Um, as per usual nothing that I'm saying should be construed as medical advice. This is for informational purposes only. If you need medical advice please talk to your healthcare provider to get that advice and if at some point you wouldn't mind please taking a moment to like, share, subscribe and or post a quick comment on the video I'd really appreciate it so thanks in advance for taking a second to do that so uh, someone uh, posted a couple of comments on uh, a couple of my reels um, on, on Instagram actually got some questions on Instagram they're almost always from YouTube so thank you for uh, actually posting some questions on Instagram um, makes, makes me feel very very special and, and very uh, very happy um, so uh, on a couple of different reels that I had posted and about about high dose sulfur therapy, uh, very quick background context. Um, there's some really compelling um, clinical evidence, and you know, su supported by um, you know roundabout evidence from the research literature that um, a lot of us might be sulfur deficient, um, and correcting a sulfur deficiency can really help with chronic digestive issues, joint issues, um, hair issues, skin issues, potentially detox pathways. So you, issues, potentially mitochondrial dysfunction issues, and, and other things as well. Sulfur is very, very important. Um, fourth most common mineral in the body, if I recall correctly. Uh, very, very important. If we don't have enough, it's it's not good. Um, <clears throat> so the uh, I don't have the questions up because Anyways, just didn't have time to get them up on my on my computer to be alongside my phone here today. So going by based on memory here, um, <clears throat> but uh, basically this individual said that um, you know she was gradually building up her dose of MSM and was starting to uh, at first found that it was helping with uh, bowel motility. Um, she had indicated that she was having issues with slower um, motility mm -hmm. in the first place, and, and that was one of the reasons uh, she started on the MSM. At first it seemed to be helping, um, but then things started to slow down again. And then I think she posted another question a couple of days later, give or take. Um, saying that um, she was noticing that um, her anxiety levels were actually getting worse and I think just digestive issues were getting worse if I'm, if I'm not uh, remembering incorrectly there. Um, so asking, you know, is this something that's normal and um, is she going up too fast? And that was kind of the, the nature of the question. So um, of course, I can't give any direct advice over social media, but I'll just speak to this academically because um, I now have hundreds of patients who I put on high dose sulfur. And in many cases, it goes very, very smoothly. And I would say it, it ballpark, you know, 80 ish percent of cases, it's been you know, very, very helpful. Um, so I'm, I love high dose sulfur. I learned about it from a doctor named uh, Kathleen Janelle. Uh, Dr. Janelle is a fellow naturopathic doctor, works out of Washington, uh, down in the US. And I've interviewed her on my podcast. And I, um, or I have two podcasts. Which one is it again? Oh, right. The Overcoming Chronic Illness podcast. So it's available on YouTube and pod podcast platforms. Please check that out if you're interested. And uh, please consider checking her out on um, you know, Instagram. And she has a YouTube channel as well. So uh, really, really brilliant doc and it's awesome therapy. Really thankful to her that she taught me how to do this. Um, you know, she put on a course and taught me and many other people how to do this. And uh, yeah, thankful to have had the chance to learn from her additionally over my podcast. So um, long and short of it is that with um, uh, building up the dose of MSM, um, sometimes it does not go smoothly. <laughs> Most cases it does, sometimes it does not. Um, and I've had some patients where they have needed to go up very, very, very slowly. Um, you know, for example, if I had a patient who was like increasing by say a gram at a time, um, you know, a gram every couple of days or so, and that was causing problems, I might recommend they go up say maybe a quarter of a gram at a time. So, um, or sorry, uh, yeah, no, that's right. Yeah, thinking in terms of teaspoons, usually we do it in powder, quarter teaspoon is a gram. So wait a minute, did I get that math wrong? No, no. So, um, yeah, so I, I might recommend they go up just quite a bit slower. And sometimes they have to go up, you know, instead of going up every couple of days, they're going up every few days, maybe even like every week. Um, I've had some patients where they've, say, got up to uh, maybe eight grams and then they seem to just hit a plateau point. They can't tolerate more than that uh, without having flare up. So I say, you know what, just hang out there for like maybe a couple of weeks and then we'll gradually try increasing it again. Um, and so in, I would say, of the cases that don't go smoothly and it, we really have to fiddle with like going up extra slow and, you know, kind of increasing and then waiting for a little bit and then increasing again, I'd say with those cases, probably give or take 80, 90% of the time, um, we're able to find a, you know, sort of a sweet spot um, a way of escalating the dose and it goes we eventually get them up to a, a therapeutic dose. We might not get all the way to our target dose that we originally set out at, but one of the fringe benefits of being sensitive is that oftentimes a lower than standard full dose is, is effective. Um, so 
we get up to whatever dose they're tolerating and doing well with, and, and we can see benefit. I'd say that's about 80 to 90% of the trickier to increase um, the dose cases. Um, I'd say maybe in 10 to 20% of those cases, we just seem to be like, you know, bat and zero. We're just getting nowhere with it. Um, it just seems any dose is causing a flare up and and we have just given up on the therapy, to be perfectly frank. Um, I mean, of those cases, <laughs> we're really splitting hairs here with percentages, I guess, but um, I would say of those cases, maybe 50% of them, um, I've felt before giving up on it that like we probably could take another run at it. We could maybe try finagling it a bit more, but sometimes patients are just frustrated with the process. They've tried, they've taken a few runs at it, they felt worse from it, and they're just like, I just don't want to do this anymore. I'm like, yeah, no problem. Like there's other ways to, you know, try to get things on track. We haven't tapped into all of our options, we can look at other things. Um, so I, I, I do have some cases where the high dose MSM just seems to have been a swing and a miss, very rare, but it does, it does happen. So um, in terms of, you know, seeing those flare up symptoms, I, I think best as best I can tell, since, you know, we do have um, toxicity studies, like, you know, um, uh, these uh, animal toxicity studies showing that even like mega, 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 mega doses of MSM are non-toxic. They just can't seem to find a dose that will kill animals that they, they try to kill with this. It's you know, very uh, terrible and questionably ethical to, to do that to animals. Um, heart goes out to the animals. Uh, nonetheless, we have the data, so I'm going to talk about it. Um, they, to my understanding, have not been able to find a lethal dose um, to kill animals with MSM, which is a good sign to suggest for the animals and also, you know, for us that it's probably really, really safe. Um, and so I, I feel highly confident that MSM is non-toxic. So when patients are feeling unwell from it, I don't think it's because there's a toxic effect. I think it's very likely because they are having a um, likely a detoxification effect from that because of all the sulfur that they're getting. Now, just kind of a hot off the press thing, um, I, again, emailed Dr. Janelle. Uh, during our interview, I asked her about whether or not um, MSM, where it's methyl sulfonyl methane, um, whether that um, could add to methylation capacity in the body. And during the interview, she said, no, there's really no evidence to support that. Um, she just recently contacted me saying she found some evidence to suggest that it might actually um, work to help with methylation. And so anyways, she's looking into that. So I'm, I'm excited to see that you know update um, from her down the road or you know, hear about that. So um, just the fact that we know sulfur is important for detox pathways and we know that uh, methylation is very important for detoxification amongst other things, that could be a reason that someone's flaring from MSM maybe due to some hypermethylation or overmethylation. So and then if that's the case, then like, well, that could absolutely account for why someone was feeling anxious from taking MSM <clears throat> um, because methylation is very important, not only for neurotransmitter synthesis, but also for metabolism. And sometimes the pendulum can, can swing in different directions where some folks might feel like more depressed um, or um, you know, unmotivated or things like that if maybe they're methylating away their serotonin too quickly, but then they could also feel potentially um, anxious or revved up or, or kind of hyped up with, um, uh, or hyperactive, I should say, <laughs> hyped up. If PR firm doing that to someone, I guess maybe. Anyways, um, uh, might mo be more revved up if um, maybe there's excessive amounts of dopamine or norepinephrine or adrenaline or things like that being made. Um, so, or, or I mean, there could also be an excessive histamine, uh, like a, a methylation of histamine happening and something called histamine trapping happening if there's too much um, methylation happening and that histamine is an excitatory neurotransmitter. It can also do also other things in the body that are not so great if we have too much of it. Um, so. Uh, there, there might be a link there potentially, so that's that's quite I think quite interesting, and we'll we'll see how that unfolds over time. Um, I'm noticing how long I've been prattling on about this, so I'm going to uh, uh, undo what I said at the start of this video. It is not a video about um, sulfur reactions and um, hypersensitive individuals. Um, I will yeah, um, talk about uh, highly sensitive patients in another video. I'll leave it there for the uh, sulfur. Uh, discussion here. Um, if anybody has any questions or comments about this topic, please uh, post in the comment section below. And to the person who asked these questions, um, if you have any follow-up questions or if I didn't quite hit the nail on the head because I don't actually have your questions up beside me as I'm answering here, just feel free to post in the comment section below and I will do my best to get back to you or address that, I should say, as soon as I can. Uh, I'll leave it there for now.